Welcome back. This is Nada Mukovic. I have Peter Limbrick here in the studio. Peter is a UCSC film and digital media professor who is putting on a symposium, although I'm sure you're doing it with many other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this two-day symposium is entitled Unfixed Itineraries Exhibition and Innovative Perspectives innovative perspectives on Arab film and visual culture. And you have many special guests that are coming, artists, um, academics speaking on mm -hmm. this. Uh, you'll have screenings, presentations. All of this is free and open to the public. Absolutely. Yep. It's and all here. it begins October 25th and um, October 26th. It begins here on campus at what time, Peter? It begins at 10 o'clock on uh, Friday morning, the 25th. That's our, the start of our first panel. We'll have some coffee in the lobby, come a little early and get something to drink. And the first panel will be? Our first panel is one on this idea of movement and, and, and moving across territories. We're calling it movement and extraterritoriality. Movement you know, and, and really thinking about our, our subtitle to this unfixed itineraries idea is film and visual culture from Arab worlds in the plural. And we're really trying to stress the, the really multifaceted, diverse, incredibly complex and interesting terrain of film and video and new media and photography and all kinds of, of aspects of visual culture um, across a region that we're sort of describing as Arab worlds rather than one singular Arab world. Right. It, it's never one thing. Languages change. Languages are different. Dialects are different. Uh, historical circumstances are different. So, you know, we're trying to sort of open up a lot of those categories that, that have, I think, buzzwords and, and stereotypes attached to them, the Middle East, the Arab world, and so on. Often we're never quite sure what we mean exactly when we're talking about those. So we're really stressing that plurality. Uh, and in that panel that you mentioned, the very first one, um, that's one of the places that we're kind of thinking about, for example, the movement of, of filmmakers uh, across a diaspora, filmmakers moving by choice or, or sometimes by circumstance uh, across different countries. Uh, artists' work that travels in really unpredictable ways. For example, we're going to have on that panel... Uh, an historian of cinema, Kay Dickinson, who's done a lot of work on, on histories of, of travel across the Arab worlds and, and between the Arab worlds and Egypt. Um, but she'll be joined by Livia Alexander, who's doing a lot of work in Bahrain and Dubai and the Gulf, which is one of the kind of new centers for art and visual culture, oh, big which time. has really Dubai kind of sprung like up over the last 10 or 20 yeah, years. Yeah, Dubai has got an incredible amount of art exhibition right. and and calls for artists mm -hmm. are constant mm -hmm. from Dubai. Yeah. You just have to get there. Right. And, and so we have those centers of production changing, centers of finance are changing. Right. Uh, artists are looking to, to new places, different places than they used to. Uh, and, and another person on that panel, for example, is Nabil Malek, who is uh, uh, an incredibly important uh, foundational figure in, in Syrian cinema uh, who's worked for many, many years uh, really on the margins of the, the national film organization there, which used to have really a monopoly on film production and uh, and he's someone who's moved a lot in his work while retaining this this uh, commitment to making film in Syria uh, and about Syria so you know that's just one example that's only the first panel that'll get you through till noon right. and then it, you know we just we keep on going and then you keep going for two days mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the next panel is called itineraries of intertextuality mm -hmm. past present and future itineraries it's interesting how your symposium is very challenging Challenging for the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Itineraries of intertextuality. Lots of multi-syllables there. Yeah, if I'm not a film student mm -hmm. or working in academia at the yeah. moment, what, what do you mean by that? Sure. <laughs> well, look, one of the things that that panel is doing is it's following uh, what's going to be a really exciting screening. And I'd say that all the way across this, my, my co-organizer, Neil Shakri uh, from UC Davis and myself, we and our steering committee here at Santa Cruz, uh, Shelby Graham, the curator at the Cessnon Gallery. Um, all of us have been really committed to this idea of not simply having scholars or academics talking about 
art or artists or film or video, um, but really keeping a dialogue between and across uh, creators and, and scholars and producers and so on. That's, so, why it's, um, that's why it's a symposium. Right, yeah. And that's a why symposium we're always, being a, it's a about place conversation. It's dialogue. not just about kind of slap, there's the presentation, and it's about this thing that you can see somewhere else. So, for example, we're screening uh, the very first film by Moumin Smihi uh, called Simo Padachance, or Simo the Unlucky Man. That'll screen at two o'clock. It's an incredible film. It's so beautiful. And we've just transferred it from 16 millimeter onto Blu-ray. So it's in a much more stable condition than it has been for some years. And it's going to look great in there, in that building. In the dark. In the dark building. All of in this is happening lab. in the Digital Arts mm -hmm. Research Center, which is right between the music and the art barns, That's or it. the art yep. places over here um, on the west side of mm -hmm. campus. Um, Ground floor, you walk straight in, and uh, room 108 is, is nicknamed the Dark Lab. The Dark um, Lab, yeah. straight through. Now, um, there's also something going on at the Cessnon Gallery, which is over right. in uh, Cowell. Uh, actually in Porter. Porter, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, in it's the Mary Porter Cessnon Gallery. It's in Porter College, a short walk uh, from, from from the dark building. Yes, um, it is. So if I can finish one little thing about the panel and, and screening mm -hmm. sort of combinations. You know, out of that screening, a Moomin Smihi's work, uh, a work from the 1960s by Ahmed Bounani, uh, a very much more contemporary work by Canadian filmmaker John Grayson. Putting those together, thinking about them, oh. watching how they interact, that's going to be one of the things we do in that panel on intertextuality. So it's so, not only thinking about those films and the way we might think about them together, it's also thinking about the fact that we look at this Moroccan film like Cizé Douze by Buenani or like Simo Parachance by the Moroccan filmmaker Smihi making that film in Paris. And we think we should be thinking, you know, not only of Morocco, not only of the Maghreb, not only of these filmmakers located in one place, but all the textual relationships, the artistic relationships that we see manifest in their film. Jean Rouche's French cinema, histories of Soviet montage. You know, Buonani said about his film, I learned everything in this film from Soviet montage. Yes, it's about Casablanca. Yes, it's about Morocco, but it's got a, an American jazz soundtrack and Soviet montage styles of editing. So that's what we mean by that intertextuality and we really no matter what the topic we sort of keep some of that i think excitement and passion in all of the things we're programming and all of the conversations we're having it's really about looking at things in in fresh and and uh, looking at them with uh, fresh perspectives and new eyes i think yeah and also training yourself to look in a more blended eye as mm -hmm. opposed to white black uh this or sure. that but yeah. but thinking about um those places where they intersect which right. is so yeah. ripe mm -hmm. for uh mm -hmm. information and dialogue exactly. and um yeah. the place where there's yeah. collaboration and yeah. and so yeah at five o'clock we're going to march over to the Cessnon gallery there's a reception over there the Cessnon does wonderful ah. programming and uh shelby graham the curator and i have put together three Three really exciting things in that space. Uh, there is a two-screen, two-channel video installation by uh, an Algerian, French, British artist. We want to say all of those things because she's influenced by all of those places. Her name is Zineb Sidera. And she's made this absolutely gorgeous two-channel video installation, um, really about histories of migration, about crossing the Mediterranean, about histories of colonization in Algeria. And these are two big, gorgeous, beautiful images that are constantly in motion, relating to each other side by side in a continual loop. That's in there, and it's there till December. So while our event is just two days, that work stays for a good six weeks or so. In the next room next to it, uh, a video installation called Tabla Dub Number no. 9 by the uh, Cairo-based artist Hassan Khan. Uh, again, a very immersive, really exciting, unusual piece of video art that, uh, that we're just thrilled to be able to have here. And some photographs from a Lebanese woman photographer from the 1920s and 30s called Marie El Khazan. She was an amateur photographer. She wasn't trained. She took photos of her sort of everyday life in the north of Lebanon. And all of her photos have been collected, as have hundreds of thousands of others, by a great organization called the Arab Image Foundation, based in Beirut, who archive collections of photography from across this region. So again, you know, three very different pieces, different historical time frames, but really letting people come at the visual culture uh, of this region from really multiple perspectives. You're listening to film and digital media professor... 
Peter Limbrick talking about his symposium that's about to happen October 25th and 26th, Unfixed Itineraries ex Exhibition, Innovative Perspectives on Arab Film and Visual Culture. Uh, Peter so that was the first day you just described. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then you got one more day, October 26th. I just want to remind folks that this is all free and open mm -hmm. to the public. Absolutely. So the next day, the, tw the Saturday, the 26th, mm -hmm. that's coming up this weekend, uh, what happens on that day? Well, we will have had a screening the night before. We do the Cessna on reception. We go back to dark at 7 o'clock Friday night for three really incredible uh, video works by Ali Cherry. Uh, from Lebanon, uh, Larissa Sansour, Hassan Khan's work again, uh, three different videos that evening. And, and then Saturday, we keep building on that momentum. So we'll have a chance to talk more with two of those artists, Ali Cherry and uh, Larissa Sansour, uh, here. They'll be talking about their work. And, and more than just talking about their work, they'll be talking about ideas and, and histories. And Ali Cherry's going to talk, for example, about the emergence of YouTube as an archive that any of yeah, us can raid from anywhere. Right. And he uses that in this work, which is partly about Syria and the, the unrest that's going on in Syria, the uprisings there. Uh, that's part of his work, Pipe Dreams. But as well as shooting stuff, he, he, you know, he raids this archive of, of YouTube in really fascinating ways. So, you know, people will be reflecting on, on things like this, the advent of, of different forms of digital media, what they do to our experiences and, and our productions of, um, of art. And we continue like that through the day. There's, uh, there's a very interesting presentation at 11.30. I mentioned Nabil Maleh from, from Syria. Uh, we're just so incredibly lucky to have some of these people here. He'll be speaking for uh, just over an hour uh, using clips from his work and his long career uh, in Syrian cinema. Some of our undergraduate students watched a film by him to, to kick off their, uh, their intro to film class this quarter. And, uh, you know, this is an amazing chance for students to get up close with um, some really, really important international uh, artists and scholars and to be really part of that conversation. I mean, we're, every panel we have planned has at least an hour devoted to Q&A, dialogue, conversation with our audience as well as the, the three or four folks at the front of the room. So, uh, you know, we're really encouraging people to come. That's why it's free. That's why it's open to everybody and uh, really hoping people will get engaged with this work, with these conversations, and uh, really with the chance to perhaps take part in a dialogue about work they may not have ever had a chance to see before. So, Professor Peter Limbrick, I, I hear a passion behind your voice. Uh, Arab film and visual culture is something that you're you're really into it right I'm now, aren't you? Embedded in it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long have you been researching and, and immersed mm -hmm. in this regional kind of uh, category that mm. you've put on um, for your for your studying sure well there are there are there are films and uh, and and genres that that I've always been interested in and always been passionate about and of course these all cross over I'm somebody that very much works on uh, I'm, I'm very interested in, in histories of colonialism, the impact of colonialism on different places, the what we call transnational as well as just international uh, relationship between uh, between films and, and, and culture uh, across history. So, you know, that, that leaves you with a very broad kind of paintbrush. And, and I've done a lot of work on that in, uh, in histories of uh, Anglophone, English-speaking cinema. But really over the last uh, five to ten years, just been more and more uh, entranced by and captivated by some of the really exciting work that has come out of uh, Arabic-speaking countries. And, and really, I think it's important for us to, to be paying attention to this right now because I think we can, we can exceed and go beyond and surpass uh, a lot of the very, very limited um, framework that we have for, for thinking about. Such as prejudices. Sure. And, uh, you know, I think after, you know, one of the strange effects of 9-11 of is that I think it's left, especially a generation of, of students here at Santa Cruz that I noticed, really wanting to know more about the visual culture of this region. And it's very difficult to do when uh, it's sometimes hard to see the work, uh, things don't exist on yeah. DVD. The, for example, I've been programming this uh, series of films by Moomin Smihi, who we could talk about briefly. Those films don't circulate on DVD. They don't even, they're, they're not even easy 
easy to find on 35mm. Uh, and yet there's this incredibly rich history of cinema there that if only students can see and if only folks can see, uh, they become very interested in. So and I've had that interest and I've right. followed it and now I'm very committed to trying to bring some of this work to other people. So do you feel, uh, Peter Limbrick, that watching these films can give us a window into a world or a place that as as americans we don't have much access to or or uh, other than the news and seeing the terrible mm -hmm. wars that have been going on there and the the really troubled the whole political mm -hmm. situation mm -hmm. is so crazy complicated and um, it's real easy to just kind of turn it off and mm -hmm. go, oh, I don't want to hear about another car bombing in Iraq. Mm -hmm. But that's not all that happens there. That, that's sure, just and I like think art, one art and, and cinema work like this for us uh, wherever we're talking about. Uh, to, to take one example, um, you know, it, it was fairly common, especially at the beginning of these uprisings that ended up being called the Arab Spring or something like it. Um, I think for a lot of commentators here in the U.S. to be going, what happened? Where did this come from? It must have been Facebook or maybe social media enabled all this. And of course, Twitter. social media and Twitter had, uh, had important roles in sustaining some of this. But I taught a class with my students here in Santa Cruz where we looked at the long histories of dissent and subversion and resistance and contestation. That comes out of colonialism. And, and that's present in cinema and that's yeah. present in other forms of art. Right. And we can look at Syrian films from the 1960s and see see all of this radical energy which we see expressed in another kind of way right now but it's not new and and i think that's one of the things that uh that histories of art and visual culture and cinema can give us is this sense of people's passions people's uh people's dreams uh people's people's feelings and you know we can engage with that in ways that uh that the newspaper or or, uh, or news sites don't necessarily give us in a much more nuanced way immersive mm -hmm. um you got me at, at film and digital media <laughs> uh peter limbrick i wish you the best with this upcoming symposium that's happening Happening October 25th and 26th at the Dark. That's mm -hmm. the Digital Arts and Research Center here at UC Santa Cruz. If you need more information, you can go to unfixed.ucse.edu. Mm -hmm. And this symposium is about Arab film and visual culture, and it emphasizes, emphasizes, emphasizes plurality. Absolutely. And um, can I mention one more thing? Because of one of the things we did in this programming was to really uh, work very closely with the Pacific Film Archive in Berkeley. Oh, yeah. To make the uh, symposium really follow the kind of programming that I was doing of this uh, mini retrospective by, by Moomin Smihi. So we do have an event for, for any listeners in the North Bay or any folks who are a bit mobile on Thursday. Um, one of Moomin Smihi's most incredible films, the really wonderful 44 Tales of the Night, is actually in a way kicking things off on Thursday night, but in Berkeley, up at the Pacific Film Archive. Um, we'll screen the film. It's a brand new uh, 35 millimeter print. It's never been subtitled in English before. Before. We did that especially, and Smihi and I are doing a kind of on-stage conversation afterwards, talking more about that. Um, then we do the symposium, and then even after that's done, there's one more of his films of this series that's playing Sunday night, uh, the very beautiful and radical uh, film Tanjawi, or Sorrows of a Young Tangerian. Uh, Smihi is uh, from Tangier, and that city is always very, very important in his work. So we've had a few films in that series. It's been an incredible series up there, getting great audiences, amazing questions. But you can catch two more of these films Thursday night and Sunday night, bookending all of the events here in Santa Cruz. And is that one Sunday night at the Pacific Film Archive? Also at the Pacific Film Archive. In Berkeley. And we'll show his film Simo Par de Chance in that screening schedule I mentioned uh, on Friday. So lots of chances to see more of his work as well as all these other folks. Well, again, Peter, I wish you the best. Uh, best symposium ever. <laughs> I love symposiums myself, and I hope uh, as many of you all can can get up there. And if you can't hear any of the lectures, at least see some of the screenings. Again, you can mm -hmm. go to unfixed dot ucse dot edu mm -hmm. um, you can you. see there the very many people that have made this possible both uh, both organizers and, and sponsors we're very grateful to be able to do this yeah and we are so lucky to have uh, your work here at in Santa Cruz Thank and um, the opportunity to have these rare uh, people speaking and movies shown. Thanks for inviting me. It's, it's great to talk about. My pleasure.